Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 186. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 185 to 202. Hey, in this trick, we are going to do a trick very similar to 85, but we're going to have two criteria. Here's the setup. We have a little database, uh, name, age, test score, and the two criteria to extract records is score greater than or equal to 75, this person, this person, this person, and, oh, uh, and this one, and this one, and so f one, two, three, four, five, um, but also we have an and, which also has to be true, over, uh, equal to or over than 18. We got one, two, three, oh, there's one there. Uh, and one there too. But the only three that match both are name two, five, and six. Now, again, if you were doing access queries, it'd be real easy to do. Not only that, but if you did advanced filter, it'd be very easy to do this. However, if you want a dynamic table that expands and extracts as you change things here, then here's how you do it with a formula. And this is much more complicated than doing it with advanced filter in Excel. Uh, first, we have to count the number of records that meet both criteria. Hey, but why don't we name, I want to name this range name, age, and test score so we can use those names over here in our formulas. I'm going to highlight the whole range, and since the fields are here and the field names at the top, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3. And then I'm going to say uh, top row only by unchecking left column. You could have also gone to formulas, define, name, create from selection. In 2003, it would be uh, insert and then uh, menu and then names. Let's see it. Let's highlight that. And sure enough, you can see the test score there. All right, let's count. I'm going to use some products. Since there's two criteria, there's lots of ways to do two criteria, but not some if. All right, our first array is going to be uh, the score. So I'm going to use F3. And notice that there's a test score. So I'll double click that. And that's going to be greater than or equal to this. Now, since this is a bunch of true falses, and um, we want to put some parentheses around those so we can multiply the next set of true and falses, which is age. So I'll hit F3 because I forgot what it is. Oh, there it is, age. If I remembered what it is, I could have just done typed it in. Uh, greater than or equal to 18. Close parentheses and then close parentheses on the sum product. Uh, and that's it. It'll give us a bunch of true falses. Multiply them together. For two trues, it'll be one. And then the sum product will add all the ones. So there's three records. Now, let's do this big, huge formula here. Let's see if I can do this. And again, it's similar to what we just did, uh, but with two criteria. Hey, we're going to start out with if. And then we're going to say rows. And this row we're sitting in right now is F dollar sign 16 colon F16. Now what this does is this expands. This is an expandable range. This is locked. This is not. So as we copy down, when we get to uh, row 17, it'll ask the question rows, Will, the function. Uh, what rows are there between, how many rows are there between 16 and 17? It'll be two. Right now it'll deliver one. So this is a clever way to get a running number total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in a formula as you copy it down. Now, is that less than or equal to our count up here? And that needs to be locked, so I'll hit the F4 key and put the dollar sign in front of the column in row. Oh, that's our true-false. If we get a true here, that means we're below or equal to 3. We want to do our index. Index will allow us to look up uh, something in array as long as we give it a row number. Now, look at this. Since we're ret actually retrieving a part of a database, in this column we need the name column from over here. In this column we need the age. And in this column we need the test. So we're going to use the indirect. Indirect of what? This name right here. Now, be sure and lock it. I'm going to hit F4, F4, so the dollar sign is in front of the number. What does indirect do? Indirect takes a text string and converts it to a reference. Since name is the name of this column right here, that'll work just fine. If you don't believe it, you can use your F9 trick to evaluate. And see, there's all of the uh, elements in that field. Control-Z. 
All right, so we have our array. And as we copy this over to this column, it'll switch to the age array, and then to this column, the test score. Now we need to get row number, so I'll hit comma. Now how in the world are we going to get a bunch of trues and falses? Uh, well, first we're going to have to do the small. The small function will allow us to uh, select the uh, three trues. And we'll see how, that, how the small function does that in a moment. But first, for the array, we have to develop the trues and falses. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if. And first, we'll start with uh, the score here. I'll hit uh, F3 to paste name. And I got test score. If test score is greater than or equal to our hurdle, and I'll use uh, F4 to lock it in both directions. That's one set of trues and falses. Then we say comma if. And the next one is um, age. And I'll type that one in. If that's greater than or equal to our 8. Now we need to lock this G3. This criterion needs to be used in every cell. So I'll hit my F4 key. Now we have some trues and some uh, and falses and trues and falses so multiply together true true will be uh, true for whatever's coming up here comma well what's the point here the indirect we have our range all we need is a row number so somehow we need true true and the row well it's very simple we'll use row of um, and we'll use age we can use any one of the columns because any one of the columns will give us the correct um, row number. So I'll use age just because it's short to type. Close parentheses. Now let's go look over at our table. If we have a true here, so this is true, true. If right now we ask for the row, it would say 15. But that's not what we want. So let's look at this. Down here I'm going to say minus row of this. And I have to lock this one with the F4 key. Well what does this do? We have the uh, an array here of all these. That's because these are arrays here, right? But it's going to subtract, because this is a single cell, it, it'll subtract 14 every time because it's locked on that. Well, what will it give us for the first occurrence? Oh, right here it would be true, right? So it would be row 15 minus 14, which is 1. Oh, but wait a second. That's not the first record. That's actually the second record, so we need to add 1 here. The reason we add 1 is because we start off 14 minus 14 is 0, and we really want a 1 there. So we have almost finished. Remember, this whole small thing here is just to get the row number for that range, which we're in the name common, column. But I'm going to close parentheses off this if because we don't need that false there. And oh, we have two conditions. Remember, that's uh, what makes this a little bit different than the one we did over here because we have two conditions. So I close on parentheses on that second if. And we're left with array and k. Now here's the deal. This is going to give it a bunch of trues and falses. True, true will give us a row number. So we'll have an array of row numbers. But what we want is them in order. Remember, right now we have row 2, 3, 4, and then 5 and 6. Well, we for the k, guess what we're going to do? We're going to do this rows. Because remember, this delivers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as you copy it down. Well, that's perfect. Because as we copy it down, the first one will pick up the 2 row. As we copy it down to the second row, it'll pick up the next only number in that array, which is row 5. And that'll be the second smallest. And that will work all the way down. <coughs> Again, this gives us a whole array of row numbers. This will give us our 1, 2, 3, smallest 1. And that will give us our row numbers. Now I'm going to close parentheses on the small. And then we're left with the index, but we have our row number. We don't need our column, so I'll close parentheses. Finally, we want our if. That's from up here. Because remember, if uh, our count here is less than this 3, we want a blank. So I'm going to put comma, double quote, double quote, and close parentheses on the false. Wow, that's a big and incredible formula. Control and shift, because this is an array formula, and enter. Now let's copy it over and down. And then I'm going to click on the last one and just hit uh, the F2 key, Edit. And looks like it got it all just right. Oh, and it got the records correct also. So that's how to, if you have to, <coughs> extract some records based on two criteria. And you don't want to use advanced filter to do it. I do want to look at one little last thing. Notice this test score column is numbers, right? Oh, before I look at that, let's change it. Let's change to see the criteria. 20. Exactly right, because there are no, there's nobody greater than or equal to 20 that also had a passing score. What about uh, 14? 
14. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. Now, let's jump on, and, that, and that's why you would do it, to change the criteria and just have it jump around like that. So it's dynamic. Even though the formula is more complicated, if you get it done and you're analyzing things, boy, that's pretty cool. All right, this is numbers. I want to click over here on 86.5 and look at a slight variation on this uh, formula if you have a word. So here we have test score, failed, pass. And up here in our criteria, we have passed. Now let's look. It's just a slight difference. We're only going to change the greater than or equal to equal, and then the formula will work. If I click right here, you can see all I've done, instead of greater than or equal to some number, it's equal the past. And that gives us the count, 3. And in the formula right here, for our uh, criteria right here, the first if test score is equal to that that word instead of greater than or equal to. So that is another two criteria way to extract from a little a database. All right, we'll see you next Excel trick, which will be another similar kind of formula, but with a, a different twist on it.